It's another edition of Time About the Movies. Today we're looking at the movies of May 10th, 1991. We've got four movies to look at today, so let's not waste any time. Let's just jump right on into it. And you know, we are at the summer movie season, and of course that's when all the big sequels come out. And uh, what bigger sequel could start off the 1991 summer movie season than, of all things, FX2? Some of you probably don't even know what FX1 is, but um, here's FX2, The Deadly Art of Illusion. Yeah, like I said, I don't even think a lot of you people really know what the first XF FX is. I can't even say the name right, but um, uh, the first FX movie was made in 1986. It also starred Ryan Brown and Brian Dennehy, and it was pretty much the same thing as this movie, where you have a designer of film special effects being an action hero. And that's pretty much it. I mean, that's pretty much all I remember from the first movie. And the second one here... It is pretty much just the same thing as the first movie, quite honestly, and it's like, I guess in a way, it's kind of a, it's not really that the movie is bad or anything, it's just a movie that I saw it once, and I never really had anything interesting to say about it afterward. That's kind of what I felt like with the first movie. Second one, I kind of feel the same thing. I saw it once, just saw it was just okay, and then I really forgot about it after a, after a couple days of seeing it. I mean, it's one of those movies where there are some fun ideas, this idea that this guy who is a special effects designer can become an action hero and go up against these bad guys with these special effects that he uses. That could be really fun, cool to see. That could be really interesting to see. It could even be kind of funny, too, if it's done the right way. But, yeah, like I said, these movies don't really have that effect on people as many as like other action films do. There's just kind of like, it's there, and then you see it, and it's just like... You forget about it the next couple of days. It's like vapor. It's like vapor going through your ears. It's just like, well, that happened. And it's just like, okay. I mean, that's really all I could say about this movie. I don't hate. I don't th hate these movies. They're just, they're just movies that don't leave a lasting impact to me, quite honestly. And I think a lot of people would agree because I don't think anybody really ever talks about these movies for anything special. And that's all I really have to say about it. I mean, I wish I had some more to say on it to be a little more descriptive about what I see here, but. They are what they are. They're movies that they're there, they come by, and then a couple of days later you automatically forget about them. That's pretty much all I could say about this movie, unfortunately. So, um, yeah. That's that's FX2 for you. So, um, with that said, let's move on to the next movie, and that is Blake Edwards' latest comedy, Switch. Another one of Blake Edwards' comedies from the last half of his career where he was kind of... He was kind of falling off the pace and he was just trying to do anything to keep his name relevant. It's a shame that this move, that these movies haven't been as good as they should have been because, of course, Blake Edwards is probably one of the great comedy directors of all time. And it's like right as soon as Peter Sellers passed away, he didn't really have that same track record that he did before. There were a couple of movies he made after the last Peter Sellers' Pink Panther movie that actually turned out pretty good, but... Nothing that really came came to, to that spark that the, Panth the Pink Panther movies had at that point when Sellers was still alive. Uh, we talked about Skin Deep a couple of years. It's in a couple of years past this one, and um, I don't even know what I was trying to say with that. But uh, Skin Deep was a movie we talked about with him. Is that he directed a couple of years before this one came out? And this one, there's definitely some good ideas to it. I like this idea that this womanizer turns into a wo turns into a woman after he gets killed. And uh, you can definitely tell where Family Guy got the inspiration for the Quag for the Quagmire storyline in the Valentine's Day episode they did, because this is very pretty much that, in in a way. But um, the jokes just aren't really there. I mean, there's a good idea to it, but the jokes just aren't really there. And as much as I like Ellen Barkin as an actress, I don't think she's a very good comedic actress. I haven't seen her in anything that's where she really is hilarious in it. Maybe Ocean's Thirteen, but even then, that was just kind of like. I mean, she was she was good in the movie, but she didn't really do a whole lot to be super funny or anything. And uh, Jimmy Smith is also in this. Then of L.A. Law fame, of course. You got Joe Beth Williams, Lane Baracco, and uh, just some good. There's, there's some good ideas here. I just don't think the comedy is as good as I think they wanted it to be, and it's a shame too because you could tell Blake Edwards was still trying to ca capture that magic he had before, and it just wasn't there. It's a movie that's just kind of like, okay, it's just like. I get the idea, and it just really you can pretty much you can pretty much pre predict what, everything that's going to happen at that point, unfortunately. And uh, it's a shame too, because like I said, there's a good idea to it, 
just the wrong execution, unfortunately. Uh, Switch just, it overall doesn't work, unfortunately. And again, that's a shame. So let's go ahead and move on to the next movie, which is probably the best release of the entire weekend. It's the documentary Madonna Truth or Dare. Probably one of the best documentaries ever made, even if you're not the biggest Madonna fan, you could still find a lot to really appreciate in this movie. I really love the way this documentary is shot, because it's not just a typical documentary, it's a very uniquely made documentary. It's a film that, just focusing on the backstage life of Madonna, but the way they shoot it, it's kind of like a, it's got like a cinema verite style, sh style, while most of the performances are edited to be in color, and um... It's Madonna at her peak. I mean, Madonna made a lot of good music back then, and she still does. And you can make fun of her age and all that, but she's still a very, she's still a pretty, a pretty entertaining person and a good musician with the later works that she did. And uh, this is a very, it's a very good documentary overall. It's just a very good documentary. It's not made like a typical documentary would be, but it's a very good movie. It's a very well made film overall. There are some scenes that are a little too. Force. They were a little when they're trying to get a cheap emotional impact for you, but it doesn't really hurt the movie all that much. I mean, you could still get a lot of enjoyment out of this movie. Like I said, even if you're not the biggest fan of Madonna, you could still get a lot out of this. And it's just a damn good documentary. It's one of the best documentaries ever made, in my opinion. And, and I can't recommend it enough. If you haven't seen Madonna Truth or Dare, definitely check it out. So, um, with that said, let's move on to the last movie, and that is Sweet Talker, another movie with Brian Brown in it. How fitting that we have a show that starts off with a Brian Brown movie, and we're ending the show with a Brian Brown movie. Uh, this one is obviously not quite as well-known as FX2, although that's debatable about, XF, about FX2. I still can't get the title right. But uh, at least Sweet Talker at least looks like a decent movie. I haven't seen it, so I can't really comment on it. Um, it doesn't really look like it has anything that truly makes it stand out. It's, it seems like kind of a formulaic premise to it. And... You know, honestly, that could probably be a good thing about it. It's a movie that I think is a crowd pleaser, and I think it's a movie that, um, uh, when you really look at it, you could, we can all use a little crowd pleasing movie that doesn't feel like it has to be grand or epic or anything in that kind of way. And from the trailer of this, that's what I'm getting a lot from in this movie. And I mean, it could be right up my alley. It might be one I definitely would want to check out one day, especially with Brian Brown and Karen Allen in it. But um. I can't really comment on it again because I haven't seen the movie, but um, the trailer for this one definitely has more interest in seeing this than it would say FX2 or even the first FX again. But, um, so yeah, that's my thoughts on Sweet Talker for you. And so on that note, we wrap up another edition of Time About the Movies. We'll delve into the weekend of May 17th next time around with um, some, good, some good movies. Uh, Bill Murray and Richard Dreyfuss in What About Bob? We also have Brian Bosworth in the So Bad It's Good Stone Cold. Mannequin on the Move, which you might have... You might be surprised on what I have to say about the first Mannequin, but we'll get to that one when we get to that one. Uh, Auntie Danielle, and also Opening Night. So five movies to look at next time around. So thank you guys for watching, and as always, if you want to see more videos like this, uh, check out the playlist on the next page, check out the previous episode, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for another new episode. So thank you for watching, I'll see you guys tomorrow, and until then, as always, take care.